Hi everyone, it's Charlie. I got a lot of requests to do more deleted scenes from the Shazam movie. They just released it on digital, so that's where all this new footage is coming from. This was meant to be the alternate opening to the movie that gives you a way bigger picture about the brief explainer that he gives on Black Adam and what happened with the seven deadly sins thousands of years ago. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs in there. This is all stuff from the comics that they're doing, and we'll see a lot of this during the Black Adam movie, so we'll break it down. There's a new round of that IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Shazam or Black Adam comment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. So this is taking place a long time before the actual beginning of the movie, which was supposed to be around 1974, I think, where he meets Dr. Savannah as a child, because as he sits down here at the end of this scene, he starts his seeking spell, find me someone pure of heart, and then that's later when Dr. Savannah as a child was supposed to show up, and they start with the actual plot of the film. But at the very beginning of the deleted scene, when he bursts through the door and then seals it behind him so that no one can open it, he's coming from one of the other realms of magic. Remember, we're talking about the Magic Lands, the seven different realms of magic that we're going to see in the Shazam sequel. The backstory that he gives about their fight with Black Adam and what happened with the Seven Deadly Sins is actually way darker than I ever thought that they would go in a movie like this, so it kind of makes sense why they deleted it. They didn't want to spend too much of the film in exposition explaining what happened with Black Adam because they're leaving a lot of that backstory to be told during the Black Adam movie, and in general, the tone of the film was supposed to be a little bit lighter, more comedic, and when he's talking about what happened, he says that when Black Adam released the Seven Deadly Sins on Kondok, they then, after they got done polluting mankind, so to speak, and unleashing all this chaos, they then turned on the Magical Council and polluted them and caused this great civil war. He basically says that the Magical Council turned on themselves because they'd been poisoned by the Seven Deadly Sins, which is way more hardcore than just saying the Seven Deadly Sins killed them like you saw them trying to kill the kids during the movie instead of trying to poison them psychologically and getting the Shazam family to turn on themselves. Maybe we'll see something like that during the Black Adam movie. I don't know exactly how dark that's going to be. I still think that it's going to be PG-13, so not that dark. But after the Magical Council killed themselves all but the wizard, the wizard was able to trap Black Adam using his magic, so he's still trapped somewhere using a special enchantment. That's right out of the comics. I'll explain that in a second. But then the Seven Deadly Sins just sort of scattered to the other realms of magic, so the wizard had to go on this big quest to go track them down and trap them one by one in that special magical device. So the very beginning of this scene where he bursts through the door is happening right after he's finished that quest. Like, I've finally done it thousands of years later, finally trapped the rest of you. Even if you haven't read all the Shazam comics, you probably detected they're doing the New 52 Shazam Black Adam origin story mixed with the newer DC Rebirth Seven Realms of Magic storyline, especially because of that post credit scene. The Seven Realms are about to be ours. But the minor change that they made to the backstories from the comic book story were that in the comic version, it was just Black Adam himself that killed all the other members of the Magical Council except for the wizard Shazam. He was able to trap him for all time using a special enchantment until Dr. Savannah, who had the ability to literally see magic with his special eye. They kind of did that during the movie, but they used this slightly different twist with the Seven Deadly Sins to give him the special eye. Dr. Savannah, seeking magic like he is during this film, finds the tomb, and because he can read magic, he can see magical enchantments, he knows to say the word Shazam, and that releases Black Adam from his prison. The rest of the comic book story, right up to the carnival fight at the end, is mostly Dr. Savannah riding shotgun with Black Adam, while Black Adam himself releases the seven deadly sins to create a bunch of chaos and keep people busy, long enough to try and trick Billy into giving him all of his powers just like Savannah does during the movie version. The Rock himself explained that when they were first conceiving of this origin story and Black Adam was in the Shazam movie, they decided that there was way too much explaining to do because they're trying to make Black Adam this really huge character. I mean, The Rock was going to be the biggest star in it, so naturally you want a lot of the movie to focus on developing his character, but they couldn't do that and develop the Shazam family at the same time without the film just completely getting overblown. So it was The Rock himself that went to Warner Brothers and asked for permission to separate the origin stories into a Black Adam movie and then a Shazam movie. So that is why The Rock did not actually star himself in the Shazam movie. But all the characters at the end of that comic book story wind up in the same place as they do at the end of the Shazam movie. At the end of the comic book, Mr. Mind comes to Dr. Savannah and tells him about the seven realms of magic just like he did in the post credit scene. 
the part that they're saving for the Black Adam movie is someone coming along and either willingly or unwittingly releasing Black Adam from his magical prison into present day, and eventually he'll set his sights on taking the Shazam family's powers for his own. I haven't heard anything about Mark Strong's Dr. Savannah being the Black Adam film, so I don't expect him to show up during that, so obviously they'll have to change a couple more things because they use so much of the comic book origin story for the first Shazam film. There were rumors that part of the Black Adam movie story was going to be based on Black Adam the Dark Age comic book. During that, he tries to resurrect his wife with the help of Felix Faust, who winds up double-crossing him. I'm not expecting a literal adaptation of that entire story. He has the entire Justice Society after him trying to trap him, but it's happening at the end of a long series of battles that he's had with the Justice Society. So it's not exactly a story that you would start off with, but it does paint him as an anti-hero instead of being just a straight up villain. And obviously because it's The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, he's going to be playing more of an anti-hero. So just expect him to spin Black Adam that way. Really good example of The Rock doing that with the character is him showing up for the first time in the Fast and Furious franchise. He showed up as an antagonist, a cop that was chasing down Vin Diesel and the crew. He was just supposed to be this angry badass character that was absolutely certain he was on the side of law and order. Black Adam's alignment in the comics is more like lawful evil. He's a Doctor Doom style character. He rules over Kondok with an iron fist. He has very clear ideas about what's right, what's wrong, how to punish people, what the bureaucracy should be, just like Dr. Doom ruling over Latveria. He does seem like a really terrible person, but it's not all chaos and burning everything to the ground. He definitely wants to preserve life in his home state, but he just doesn't care about anybody else outside of that. A lot of what they do during the Black Adam movie will just depend on how much money they spend on it. I assume that because they only spend about $100 million making the Shazam movie, they'll probably spend a little bit more because it's The Rock. He's a much bigger box office draw internationally, so it's a little easier to justify a higher budget for that movie, so maybe closer to like $150 million. But we'll probably find out about that later this year. Don't worry, they're supposed to start shooting the Black Adam movie next year. Let me know in the comments though, what do you actually want Black Adam to be doing in present day before he sort of sets his target sights on the Shazam family? Really awesome stuff coming up. Comic-Con is next week, so brace yourself for all the trailers. When we get to next week, I'll do a schedule video sometime early in the week just to explain which videos I'm already planning on doing, but there's always a bunch of surprises. So if you have any special requests for videos during Comic-Con next week, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to add it to my list. And as long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see all the Comic-Con videos when I post them, so no worries. But congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big video, Arnold's K. Please email me on the About page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here for that other Shazam Black Adam deleted scene, and click here for all my Spider-Man Far From Home Easter eggs and post credit scenes. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.